Welcome to part four of the top-down tank battle tutorial. This time we're going to talk about bullets. We have a player and an enemy tank that can both move and aim, and now we need them to fire. So let's get started. So we're going to start with the physics layers. If you go into the project settings under 2D physics layer names, you can give names to the different physics layers that you can put objects in. And so, uh, so far I've decided I think we need four. Environment is going to be for the obstacles, um, trees, rocks, whatever, whatever obstacles are in the environment. The player two, or the player is going to be on layer two, enemies on layer three, and bullets on layer four. And what that'll do is let us do things like make the player's bullet not hit itself, or make the enemy bullets not hit each other, that kind of thing. So I've set those up. And I've also just quickly added another path for the second enemy here. And what I thought would be fun is maybe it goes around, it goes off the screen briefly. So you can see it goes over here, comes off the screen and comes back on. So it'll sort of just cycle around in a little figure eight kind of path. So we're gonna make a, so we're gonna take our existing stuff and the player I put it on the player layer and I set its mask to environment and enemies so that when it's driving around these are what it collides with and then on the enemy tank I did the same thing except that I put it in the enemies layer and I set its collisions to environment and player and I'm still deciding whether I want to put enemies here or not. So, you know, I could have two tanks with overlapping paths, and if I leave this unchecked, they're not going to see each other, so they'll just sort of uh, drive right through each other. Or if I do this, then they would collide, so I'd have to be more careful about how I set up the enemy's paths. So I'm not entirely sure yet which way will be better for that, so I'm going to leave that off for now. And then the other one is the detect radius. I'm going to set the detect radius to only see the player layer. And what that actually allows us to do is here, since it can only detect the player, we can actually trim the code a little bit because the only thing it's going to be able to see are those things, or, or things in that layer. And the player is the only one we're putting in that layer right now. Later, if there are more than one human controlled tank then they can both be in that layer and the enemy tank would see either one okay and then i've started making a bullet scene here and this is going to be the master bullet scene that the others will inherit from so it's going to have the generic bullet related things about it and i'm going to use an area 2d for its root node now, i like using area 2ds for projectiles because they don't need to collide with things, we just need to detect contact. So as soon as it overlaps something, it's going to explode and do damage and whatever it needs to do. So uh, I like using Area 2D for that. keeps it uh, nice and simple. And the sprite is attached for its appearance. And it'll have a collision shape. And then it's going to have a lifetime uh, timer that's going to that we can set to determine how long we want that bullet to last. And so it'll, you know, it'll fire and travel a certain amount of distance and then explode. And so I'm saving that in a folder called bullets and called it bullet.scene. And that will be the one we inherit for our individual player bullet or multiple types of player bullet. Maybe we want to have different kinds of weapon upgrades, um, enemy bullets, etc. All right, so let's attach a script to this bullet. And this will be the default script that all the bullets will inherit from as well. So what do we need? We need a speed variable. So we need different speed bullets. We need um, a damage. How much damage does the bullet do when it hits? And I'm also going to do a lifetime that we can set our lifetime or two. Uh, we're going to have a velocity. It needs to move. And so let's see. So in the ready, 
actually we won't do that in the ready. So when the bullet spawns, we need to make sure it gets placed at the right location, which is the, the muzzle position 2D that we've put at the end of the each tank's muzzle. And it also needs to be pointed in the right direction. So the, the node needs to be rotated so it's facing in the right direction, and then the velocity needs to travel in that direction. So whenever the bullet is spawned, we need to pass all that information into it. So we're going to make a start function here that's going to initialize it. And we're going to pass it a position and a direction. And those will be those will both be vector those will both be vectors. Position will be its the global position for it to start at, and direction will be a direction vector for what direction it should be pointing in. So we set our bullet's position to that position that we passed in. We set its rotation to the to the direction we passed in, uh, its angle, and then we set our lifetime dot wait time equal to whatever its lifetime is set to, and then we set our velocity equal to that um, direction vector times speed. And then that way it will travel in whatever direction we want it to go at whatever speed we want it to go. And then in our process function, we're just going to update the position. We just add velocity times delta. And now the other thing that this is going to need is we have a couple of signals to connect, right? Because we want when the a body enters, we want to connect that signal. And then when the lifetime times out, we want to connect that signal. And so what do we want these things to do? Well, when the lifetime times out, we want it to we want to delete the bullet. But we also probably want it to explode and do whatever. Now, I'm not going to be doing the explosion animation yet and everything. So I'm just going to make a explode function uh, that's just going to do Q free for now. And then later we'll come back and add the animation in. I just want to get this working. So when the timer times out, that's when we want to explode. And when the bullet detects a body entered, then we want to make sure it might hit a it might hit a wall. It might hit an enemy tank. If it hits a wall, it should just explode. If it's an enemy tank, it should explode and also deal damage. So we need to explode, but we also need to check if the body that it hit has a take damage method. So if the, if the body that it hit is capable of taking damage, then we will call that method and pass in the damage amount. So now we can do damage to whatever things the bullet hits. Okay, And so that's going to be our generic bullet code that's going to apply to all the different kinds of bullets we can fire. And now we need to make a specific one for the player. All right, so I've made a new inherited scene called Player Bullet. And I've added this green shell sprite. Now one thing to point out is if you look at the Sprite sheet, the bullets happen to be drawn now fa facing to the left. So they're going to be rotated 180 degrees. So I just took the sprite node and I rotated it 180 so that my bullet will be pointing in the zero direction. Um, I added a rectangular collision shape. You could probably do, I mean, you could do a capsule here too. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the overlap, the bullets will be moving relatively fast. So they're going to look like they hit no matter what kind of collision shape you have here, as long as it doesn't stick out too far from the shape. And so we need to add, so I've disconnected the script so that I can add a new one that inherits from, that inherits from the bullet script. And this is where I could add whatever specific code I need for the player bullet, but I don't think I have any specific code to add to the player bullet yet. So I'm just going to leave that as is um, until we come back to do 
the next step. So now we need this, the player to spawn these things. And so this is a problem that a lot of beginners run into is when they're making some object that fires projectiles is, well, this, this, this code is where we have the control code, right? So you're controlling the player, you're going to click fire, and you're going to want the player tank to spawn a bullet right here and go. Well, that bullet, if you add that bullet as a child of the tank, then that bullet is going to rotate when the tank rotates, and it's going to move when the tank moves. So if you fire a bullet in, you know, to the right, and then you turn your tank, that bullet is going to swing around to always be in front of the tank, and that's not what you want, right? You want to fire and forget. The shell just flies out by itself, and it's no longer attached to or the responsibility of the player. Another thing is that if a a reason, or another reason that that doesn't work well is if the enemy tank fires a, a, a bunch of bullets and then you destroy the enemy tank, those bullets would then instantly disappear as well because they're children of the enemy tank rather than continuing to travel on by themselves. So you want the bullets to be independent of the things that fire them. One way to think about it is that the, the tank itself has no idea what or control over what happens to a bullet after it shoots it. Right? It just hands it off and says, there it goes, I'm, I'm no longer controlling this. So you need to hand it to another scene. And that's probably what our main scene is a good candidate for. So if we pass the... So if we pass the bullet to the main scene, then the main scene can instantiate it, add it as a child, do any management of it that needs to happen and our tanks that fired them don't have to know anything about that. So we're going to go to our player script first and we already created a bullet export variable. So you're just gonna drag the player bullet and drop it in there so it knows which one it's gonna use. And then make sure you have your gun cooldown set and then we can go to the player script. Actually, I misspoke. We're going to start with the tank script because the enemy tanks need to fire too. So both of them have this can shoot variable. They have a gun timer that counts down uh, the cooldown of their gun. So that is already good for both types of tank. So what we need to add is the actual shoot function. All right, so I'm going to add a, fu a shoot function here. And what this function is going to do is... And so what this function is going to do is spawn a bullet if can shoot is true. And if it is, then we're going to set can shoot to false and start the cooldown timer. So gun timer start. And remember when the gun timer ends, can shoot goes back to true, so another bullet is allowed. And then we need to get those two pieces of information that we send to the bullet. It's the position and the direction. And that line's going to get kind of long, so I'm going to use a temporary variable here for the direction. The direction is a unit vector, so I need a unit vector, and I need to rotate it so that it's pointing in the direction of the turret. So I'm going to use turret.globalrotation. And then I can create the bullet. But again, we don't want to spawn the bullet here and make it a child of the player or of the tank that's, that's shooting it. We want to pass it to the main scene. So we're going to do that with a signal. So we have a signal here called shoot. And I'm going to emit that signal. I'm going to emit the shoot signal. And then along with it, I'm going to pass the bullet and the two pieces of information the bullet needs, which is the position, which we're going to use the muzzles, global position, and that direction we just calculated. So now our tank can, any of the tanks can shoot, and they emit that bullet and then they're done, they're happy, they've emitted the bullet. The fact that nothing is available to handle that or listening to that right now and actually manages the bullet doesn't matter to the tank. So if we go over to our player script, all we've got to add is the input action for click, which is the left mouse button, to call its shoot function.
And now our player enemy, or sorry, our player tank would be shooting whenever we click the mouse button. It's just that we wouldn't see those bullets because nothing is handling them when they're emitted. And we're going to do that in the map script. Here's our map script, and this is where we're going to need a function to receive those bullets that are being spawned. And the main scene doesn't care whether it was a player bullet or an enemy bullet. It's just a bullet. It just needs knows it needs to spawn some bullet and add it add it to the scene. So we're just going to say on tank shoot here. And it has three parameters coming with it. So we're going to grab those and use those to spawn the bullet. So we're going to make a new bullet instance. Oops, lowercase is a variable. We're going to make a bullet instance. We're going to add it as a child. And then we're going to call its start function with the position and direction that we just passed in. And now this method just needs to be connected to any tank's shoot signal. So if we go to the player, we can connect its shoot method, or sorry, shoot signal to on tank shoot. And then there we go all connected. So let's give it a try and see if it works. Oops, I forgot to set the time on the bullet. I need to give it a speed. The player bullet needs to have a speed, say 750, a damage, say 10, doesn't matter right now, and a lifetime, I'm going to say 0 0.5. All right, back to our map and run that again. And there we go. So now we have a bullet coming out. You can see um, it disappears after half a second, but if it hits the enemy tank, it also hits. So our collisions are working, our cooldown is working, and that's a good start. So in the next step, we're going to do the same thing with the enemy tank. We need the enemy tank to also spawn its bullets, and it'll do it whenever the player was, is within range, and the cooldown is has uh, expired. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next step.